Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, well clearly we're, we're talking about that first thing because it's on the screen. Let me get it. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash Ashima Plus. My name. Oh my God, I've hidden it. No, this is not going well. There we go. Okay, bear with me one second. I will come back to that in a second. Things are in the wrong places. There we go. There we go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash Ashima Plus. My name is Graham Day. I'm joined. By the man who's wearing the world's most exciting garment of clothing <clears throat> that, that anyone has ever seen. This is the man that we call Baby. Hello. Tell us a little bit more about the top that you're wearing, Bib. Uh, well, this is just sort of, just a little bit of old tat that I found in the corner of the bedroom. Uh, it looks really nice in this in this sunlight. Um, I say sunlight; it's just the light from the bedroom. But yeah, this is a uh, ice cream uploads merchandise. Um, if you would like to buy it, it's about £25. Very, very well priced. I don't think we make nearly anything off it. Um, uh, thank you, Game of the Um, but yeah, it's lovely. It's got my name on the back. If you're in Twitch, it's about three sizes too big for me now. It was two <laughs> sizes too big when I got it because I don't know what Connor did, but he ordered me the wrong size, so it was two sizes too big for me. And now it's another, another size. I look, it looks like an NFL top of me. I absolutely do it no justice. If I'm being perfectly honest, it looks like it's been put on the wrong mannequin. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it's really nice. I mean, I'm I'm not a, I'm not a t-shirt salesperson, but if I was, I would say that this is really high high end gear. And I mean, the fact that it's personalised to yourself as well. I mean, with your own name and number on the back, I mean, what, wow, what more could you ask for? Yeah, uh, yeah, get them right. If you do want to get that exclamation mark merch, if chat that's on, by the way. Um, and then, yeah, there you go. You can find a link through to our Gamers Apparel store. They are available on there. One thing they did, did say, uh, on Gamers Apparel, you can essentially choose how much the price is. So we could put the price up and make money off it. But what we've done with our merchandise, which, which is why Dad and Lad Gaming famously once said, uh, it's nice to see some uh, some good gear, uh, not rip-off prices or something like that. It reasonably we've... priced gear, I think. Yeah, it's something like yeah. That. That, that's the one. I'm just trying to make it sound even more extreme. But there you go. Uh, yeah. So we, we just basically dropped it. We make nothing on, on our merch just so that our community can have a chance to get involved. If you like the stream, if you like the series, if you want to see Pistolo rocking that number nine shirt and you want to be a part of that, then where the hell there you go. So, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. I mean, myself today, I'm not wearing it. I'm just wearing my purple Twitch jumper. There you go. There you go. Uh, also available online, but from Amazon uh, rather than Ice Cream of uh, eSports store. Uh, anyway... Welcome in, everyone. This is Ice Cream Uploads, if you don't know. We, together, are Ice Cream Uploads, well, part of the team. And in true Ice Creamy fashion, we bring you The Scoot, which is the UK's number one video game podcast. I mean, it's, it's us that says that, but still, you know, just, it's, still, it's still true. Anyway, uh, we bring you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stars from the world of video games each and every single weekday at 10 a.m.-ish, live on twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream uploads. Uh, if you are live in the chat, please feel free to use this opportunity to say hello. Um, I'll, I'll use the exclusive subscriber remote that'll do that for you. It triggers the Bibitron, uh, and he, he just, I mean, he can't even help it. It just randomly shouts words at the screen. I say randomly, it's clearly not random because you've triggered it. That's the point, but uh, yeah, feel free to use the emotes. And whatever words you have in chat, because we're going to give you our thoughts and impressions on the stories of the day, and we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions in return. We want to create a backwards and forwards, a bit of communication, a conversation. And that's important that we do because we turn this into a YouTube video and a podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and at Google Play a little bit later on in the day. So feel free to use the opportunity to get involved in the chat. Be the voice of those listening on demand later on. Feel free to get in the chat and use your emotes just like Chucky Boy has in the chat. As you use that emote that sounds a little bit like this. Hello. There you go. See, triggered, triggered, absolutely triggered. It's like it's like Graham Sooness when he sees Paul Pogba with a new haircut. Ah! <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you are in the chat, please feel free to get involved as we jump into the conversations of the day. Um, uh, he says he can't find the button. Why is it all gone? That's why. Ah, that's why I couldn't find it all. It's all moving the wrong places. There we go. Okay. Yeah. But actually, let's jump into the split screen first. There we go. I mean, you've seen what we're talking about already. We've tweeted it, and I accidentally had the title on the screen when we came into this, uh, to the scoop, but it's fine. Uh, this is the first new story of the day. We've been talking about it, expecting it for the best part of a month and a half now anyway, but now we're starting to get there. The rumor mill is churning. As Andy Robinson from VGC says, Microsoft will hold its Xbox Series X game showcase on the week of July the 20th. Halo Infinite and more to feature. 
Uh, so the article goes on to say, Microsoft will hold its Xbox Series X first-party game showcase on the week of July the 20th. That's according to information shared by journalist Jeff Grubb, corroborated by VGC's own sources, who confirmed the event is currently planned for July the 23rd. Uh, the July event will focus primarily on Series X games coming from Xbox Game Studios, but it will also confirm additional titles coming from third-party publishers, people with knowledge of Microsoft plans, said. Notably, Xbox will premiere the first Halo Infinite gameplay during the event, with the 343 shooter set to launch alongside the Xbox Series X during the 2020 holiday season. Uh, good morning to Pez Story Mode in the chat, as well as Pez Universe. And that, must be, that must be what they're delaying the Pez announcements for week week. Uh, no comment. Uh, <laughs> new Xbox Studio, the initiative... Uh, that's actually no comment, not not as a way, by the way. Uh, new Xbox <laughs> Studio, the initiative, uh, the company, or is it? Or is it? Do, what do we, oh, why the hell is my fucking... Uh, there we go. There we go. I just, only just noticed that the uh, view source was down the side of the screen, but it's gone now. It's fine. Um, new Xbox Studio, the initiative, the company formed in 2018 by veteran Tomb Raider, God of War, and Uncharted Creatives, will also unveil its first game during the July event, sources told VGC. Xbox had previously indicated that it would announce the initiative's project sometime in 2020. Xbox boss Phil Spencer uh, has suggested the initiative could be working on a legacy IP long speculated to be Rare's spy shooter, Perfect Dark, which would match the gameplay described in a recent designer CV. Uh, so far, all Xbox has said officially about the initiative's first project is that it has the mandate to create ambitious and innovative game experiences for Xbox. However, in an interview at E3 2018, following the studio's, uh, studio's announcement, Spencer did suggest it could have been established to resurrect a legacy Xbox IP. When studio head Daryl Gallagher, uh, Gallagher left Activision, uh, we started to have a discussion about what he wanted to do next, Spencer said at the time. I think he really loved uh, his time with Crystal Dynamics working on Lara Croft and Tomb Raider, kind of reworking some of that franchise. Uh, we were talking about some things in our past that might be interesting, nothing to announce yet, but just some things that he might want to go to work on. Further fueling speculation, Spencer tweeted in January of this year that he had visited the initiative team and that they were challenging themselves to do new things and all things in new ways. Xbox has significantly expanded its first party games production ahead of the next console generation, and at least one franchise, RPG Series Fable, is understood to be the subject of a revival at Microsoft's Playground Studio. Ooh. Ooh. So. Hmm. The news, Xbox Series X games, the showcase will take place week commencing July the 20th, rumoured to be July the 23rd. Thoughts, Bib? Uh, I mean, I don't like that. We've talked about this previously with the Perfect Dark stuff, and I don't think that is the right thing to be able to be bringing back. Uh, so I think they just need to leave that by the wayside. I, I don't think... It would work nowadays. It's a game that's not been around for. They re-released it on the Xbox Arcade for a did start. You, did you fart then? Oh, no, was I was thinking. I was oh. thinking that was that was my that was my mouth making fart noises. Um, I think they released the Xbox Live Arcade version like in two thousand and six or seven. So it's been thirteen years. But before that, it's probably been twenty years since it came out on the N sixty four. A perfect dark game. Now, I don't think would make much sense. Um, but I mean, if they're taking the initiative and they want to create new stuff and old stuff, I'm excited about the conference because the last one that they did for third party games, I actually really enjoyed. I know a lot of people didn't. I mean, we both streamed it, co-streamed it, and we enjoyed the games that was coming from it. So I'm interested to see more from it. The the what the Xbox and PlayStation World will go on forever. So there's no point really going over, oh, what do you think will be better? Who wins this conference? Blah, 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 blah. Like it's, it is. It's gonna go around in circles forever. If I was to choose anything, it would be the fucking play at PC. Didn't realize start. I was co-streaming with Yogi Bear then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, is it, it says the week of July twentieth? Does that mean that we're gonna have more than one that week? No, I think that's just a ballparking. Um, so the article does say it would. They're expecting it to be on the twenty third. They just think yeah. it's gonna be in that week. They don't exactly know where no when mm. yet but they're expecting the 23rd which would make it a thursday night which is in line with everything else uh, mm -hmm. that's happened so far unsurprisingly um it'd have been cool if they did like a two-day <laughs> event where they were going to do third and first parties and then maybe a third day where they do indies on the friday that would have been pretty cool having a full build-up of content for a week 
I think that would put them in a very good position to be able to give consumers an idea of what to expect from the uh, from the console when it comes out later on this year. Hmm. Uh, we're back through the chat. Pistol says, "Which console do you guys prefer now? What, as in this gen, or as in rumors for the next gen?" Um, I'm seriously basic enough where I have no idea what the differences are. <laughs> okay, uh, are you talking? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about next gen then. Um, I mean, I don't really know. They both sound good. Um, the Xbox sounds like it has more power. The uh, PlayStation has a better SSD. Um, and I'll, I'll, it depends what you're speaking to. The Xbox players, uh, Xbox current gen fanboys are saying, yeah, but it's got more power. So the Xbox is better. Um, and then saying that all they've got is an SSD. But then you're hearing all the PlayStation fanboys saying, yeah, but the intensity of the SSD, how fast it is, means it just unlocks so much more. Um, I, I think it all comes down to games. It, the, the consoles yeah. themselves don't matter that much. If you've got a lot of PlayStation games, excuse me, um, in your library, kind of makes sense to get a PlayStation. If you've got a lot of Xbox games, it kind of makes sense to go to Xbox. Xbox does have good stuff with Game Pass and so on. Um, but I think this that we're talking about, the Series X game show, will help with that. We've seen a number of PlayStation titles, uh, the likes of Spider-Man Miles Morales, um, and you know, a complete mental block, uh, Horizon uh, Forbidden West, um, the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, we've seen these kind of titles for PlayStation. We haven't seen anything like that for Xbox. So that would kind of be, naturally mm. lean towards PlayStation right now, if you're talking about games. But Xbox haven't shown their hand. Uh, whichever yeah. one has skateboard for me, that'll be yeah. both. That'll be both. So you you now have to buy both of them. Uh, oh, is skate coming out for PlayStation as well? Uh, I, I imagine so. With it being yeah, it's not being confirmed as just an Xbox exclusive, has it? I and think I, the original, and, the original I, skates were. Yeah, I don't think that's anything. I mean, Metal Gear Solid used to just be on PlayStation as well. I think that's yeah. just kind of a um, a, th a thing of the time. Same with Tomb Raider as well being PlayStation. Uh, I think mm. I think that that will be gone. I can't imagine EA in this day and age will create a game just for one, unless there is an absolute wedge of cash on the yeah. table that gives them some sort of exclusive. Um, hey, Laz, do you see cross-platform becoming a norm next-gen? Yes. I Well, I see cross-platform becoming the so. norm this-gen. Um, I think it will be everywhere next-gen, or, or mostly, to the point where um, it's probably tricky right now for indie developers to factor in cross-platform but as cross-platform becomes the norm and the principles for making cross-platform cross -platform content become the norm and, and the structures and, and systems that they use to make that happen become more accessible, I, I imagine it'll just be a filtered down thing. The likes of Activision and EA are doing cross-platform now um, and obviously Epic and you know, PUBG, Corp and everyone, uh, they're all doing cross-platform now the smaller brands below those, not so much um, but I think it's just a top a top down, It'll, it will throw down. We will see cross platform across everything. Uh, I'm sick of getting destroyed by keyboard slash mouse players on Warzone, so I'm anti cross platform. Do you know what? You I should be able to filter it out. Yeah, you should have the choice. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be as soon as you boot up the game, that's it. Like the, all the servers across platform. I think you definitely should be able to just turn it off or to select the ones that you want to choose. So if you wanted to just play against PlayStation players and Xbox players, you can do. Um, but the whole a third person shooter and PC versions of the game is just that is a joke. That's just poor management from mm -hmm. whoever side it is that's doing it. They've not thought about it whatsoever. It comes across as someone who has never played FPS games before and they are just a, a game developer um, that hasn't got any knowledge of what people want from a community standpoint. If you're getting absolutely rinsed by PC players all the time, then you the chances are you're going to stop playing that fucking game and that's the last thing that the people who are uh, that what they call the um, blah, 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 investors and stockholders and stuff like that. If you stop playing their game, they're going to be more pissed than anything. So the fact that they have taken that decision, put the FPS players on PC in with computer uh, with players from console who aren't using keyboard and mouse. I mean, if you had the ch the choice to put a keyboard and mouse into your console and play, that would level the play playing field up a tiny tiny bit. But it's yeah. still going. You're still going to be at a massive disadvantage. I mean. <laughs> that's the thing there was there was conversations of can we not just make a, a pc uh segment and console segment and so on it's like I, that 
it's not always apparent. I mean, if if Warzone doesn't have uh, segments or filters, I should say, by playing style, it shouldn't matter what platform you're on as much. It shouldn't If you're playing on a PlayStation and a PC, that shouldn't matter as much. What should matter is how you're playing on that. If you're playing on a, a PC with a controller, because some people do, or, or a PlayStation with a mouse and keyboard, because some people do on certain games, um, then... They shouldn't be paired together, even though one is controller, uh, one is one's console, one's PC, and it's flipped. They still shouldn't be paired together. It should be everyone with a controller plays against everyone with a controller. Everyone with a mouse keyboard plays against everyone with a mouse keyboard because that is just there's no way an average person on a, a a controller can keep up with an average person on a mouse and keyboard. I mean, you can get some absolute heroes on controller um, that are stupid they're almost like they're, they're like what you'd expect from someone mouse and keyboard level in terms of their reactions and speeds playing on full on high sense and so on but that's a very very finite amount of people and they will hold their own uh if you get someone of the same skill level on pc though the gap there is a gap there um mm. so yeah i mean not having filters if that's the thing if warzone doesn't have a filter to just to, to just I, I get having cross platform and having playstation and xbox and pc uh, all thrown into the same um the same barrel but they all have to be using the same sort of mechanism if i'm if i'm sat sat there with one of these and everyone else is sat there mouse and keyboard uh, that was a controller by the way for anyone listening uh, um yeah. if i'm sat there with a controller and everyone else is there on mouse and keyboard uh then i'm just going to get absolutely trashed uh so it, it should filter by how 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 you are inputting your um your button presses into the game i mean pubg for a long time, I hated crossplay. I, I don't mind it now. It seems to have balanced. Um, and Is that just because uh, you've got a little bit better? No, I wouldn't say so, because I've not really changed anything. I mean, because I, I played for a long time, and we were getting shitloads of wins, solos, duos, squads, and then as soon as the switch happened, I, like, I, shared, I shared clips of me like running behind a building and then dying. Um, with no one on my screen, I, I posted like all sorts of stuff like that, and there was a disparity between the Xbox and, and the PlayStation players. Um, overwhelming PlayStation players were like, "Well, this is absolute dog shit because we are just getting shit on by average Xbox players." And then you, when they looked at the tables, pretty much the whole top end of the table was Xbox players. And the, the easy, the easiest conclusion is to say that, oh well, Xbox players are just better. They've had the game f- for longer. Yeah, they've had it for best part of a year longer. But once you've had the game for a year anyway, then that that separation isn't that apparent. There was a definite difference between Xbox and PlayStation. Guys. However, playing it now, just it seems since like they've done a few updates and changes and, and so on, it definitely balances much better now. And I think that happened when the way they changed it to having cross party party cross platform parties as well. It was originally just you all get thrown in the same game but you couldn't party together. Now you all get thrown in the same game and you can be paired with an Xbox player and a PlayStation player. And after that it just seems to be everything balances nicer. Yeah. Um but you had no option, really. You could choose to play against PlayStation players, but if you went an unticked platform, because most people have it ticked on by default, you'd just be sat there and you'd never get into a game. So it was a case of play with ping disparity, play with uh, unfavorable conditions on console, um, or don't play at all. And it was just like, well, I have to stick with it. Now it's fine. Uh, even even Tuesday stream, nice humble brag here, put two, uh, five games on stream, one, two, job's good, and ta-da! Um, mm. A couple of months ago, it'd been like, well, five, I played five games on the stream. We might get top 10 a couple of times here and there or whatever, just because every, every fight I'd get into it, everyone was just like, they, they seemed to have more time for every shot than I did. Um, and yeah, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, uh, yeah, Fortnite really shot themselves in the foot with that. But as a PC game, I welcome it. Uh, also, the next gen consoles will be powerful enough to compete. I mean, they will be to begin with. Um, this gen consoles were powerful enough to compete. For a short amount of time, but then PCs just keep mm. going. Um, Tricky says I've turned crossplay off for Warzone, so frustrated if you don't. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, PUBG console doesn't have that kind of sway. PUBG is very much a PC game, so I play on console. If I turn crossplay off, it just absolutely died. Morning, yeeha! Um, that's just me congratulating everyone with yeah. a, a nice, healthy morning. Uh, it's not welcoming Mr. Yeeha when you're down to the stream at all. Morning, yeeha! <laughs> That's how I say it. Morning to everybody on a day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Fortnite adding the ability for people to use mouse and keyboard without repercussions in terms of endorsing it on console. I mean, does that even get picked up? Do mouse and keyboard console players play against controller console players? If they do, that doesn't work for me. That's, that's, 
that's a bit shitty. It is. I mean, and I welcome Fortnite for being open to everyone, but Fortnite, because it has so many players, should just go, okay, you want to play Master Keyboard? Separate queue. There you go. Yeah. If you want, you want to play Controller? Separate queue. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that. Um, yeah, Controller on PC at 240 FPS is pretty silly, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, frames and hurt. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to shoot frames and hurts down. I mean, I've got 244 hertz monitor that I'm reading this chat on, well overpowered uh, for what I'm using it for. But yeah, that isn't as important. It is important. Frames uh, win games, um, as, the, as the phrase goes. But, but if you're changing the input mechanism, that is even more. So if the frames are, are almost irrelevant, if you're having to like clip a stick and work it to turn around, as opposed to like full uh, flick of the wrist or the elbow, depending on how you play um to to do a full 720 i mean if i'm playing on pc on pubg i can jump in the air and i'll do three rotations before i hit the floor on console i jump in the air and hit turn as i'm going up and i get just over one rotation in a jump you can't compete with that sort of reaction uh, uh, differential and fortnite the damage per shot increases with the fps so it, is, it really is an unfair advantage yeah i don't mean it isn't i'm saying it's, i'm not that's what i'm saying i'm not saying it's not unfair but i'm talking about that even that the the fps increasing with differential there was there was the same sort of thing on pubg as well if different fps uh gave you a different dps so the fps that you had had a direct input on the damage per second that your guns would make so if you had two people exact same guns exact same loadouts firing at each other but had different fps's one would kill the other one uh because they got more damage per second so it is important but that gets absolutely shot into insignificance when you when you're doing mouse and keyboard versus controller, one hundred percent. But anyway, forgetting FPSs and DPSs and uh, hit hertz and, and stuff. Xbox Series X games conference confirmed for week commencing July twentieth. Well, not confirmed, rumored for week commencing July twentieth. The rumor is July the twenty third, Thursday night. So we may have a watch along potentially. Uh, we may not. Depends uh, on on things, uh, but uh, we'll come to that as we get closer to it. The other the other thing to note is that um, obviously the, the conference will include first Halo Infinite gameplay, uh, which a lot of Xbox players will be massively hyped about. I hope it actually I hope it does something for people that aren't Xbox players, because uh, a lot of Xbox players are looking forward to the the Halo news. A lot of non Xbox. Uh, players are just it's another halo game i hope i hope they do something different i hope they show it not just oh look a guy in a green suit shoots a gun because because that's like seeing an, another call of duty trailer oh look someone shoots a gun and it's, it's like mm. show me something it'd be a, a stunning visual give me a mechanic give me something that that's emotive in the storyline because there's so many so many things that are that's kind of a barrier there for new people if you watch um, let's take one headline title versus another. A PlayStation headline title, The Last of Us. You've got human faces that are feeling pain, and it's it's a very very simple um, use UX. Uh, um, what's not task? Uh, UX fact that people relate to people. So if you if you if you're scrolling through a website and there's just like loads of products and stuff, you're like, oh that's nice. If you're scrolling through the exact same website and it's someone that looks to be holding a product, so oh, this is amazing. You're like, that, that's got someone, that's an actual person. I can relate to that emotion and it, it means more. Whereas if you, so if you put Joel from The Last of Us against uh, Master Chief from Halo, not, not completely forgetting gameplay, Joel, you can sense, you can feel what he's, he's going through because of the faces of it on that. If Halo just has guns and blasts and actions and a guy with a, with a, Chromatic face mask on, then you can't. Me as someone that doesn't know anything about the story, I was streaming the John the other day, and I asked him to give me the full like history of Halo and and what it means and and why the Halo Infinite stuff is important. Um, I want something that doesn't need any of that. Give me something that just shows me good game. Give me that a good game, not a Halo game, but a good game, and then and then yeah, I'll I'll, I'll get behind it. Until that point, until I see something that does that to me, I, it will just be another Halo game to me. Even though it might be an amazing game uh, for me as who's outside the series, I think I think they kind of need to hit that point. Don't just speak to Halo people, speak to, to gaming people. Uh, and as well as that, uh, did you ever play Project Dark, Bib? Yes. 
thoughts? I never played it. Uh, I enjoyed so the Xbox. That. Well, yeah, the Xbox version was pretty much just the uh, N64 version. So I completely forgot what the console were called then. Um, yeah, it was just like a port of that, but just upscaled. So it was good. Um, but I'd, I've never really got the hype and hysteria behind. I think it's because it was used as the Golden Eye engine from way back, um, and obviously people have a, a mad, mad affinity to that game. So I'm guessing that's the reason why people love it so much. But apart from that, I, I never really got behind it. I still think it's mad that they're trying to bring it back. If they were going to put all the eggs in, in one basket, it would be the Fable one, not the Halo one. Um, but I mean, Halo's got like a massive following and a. Uh, esport behind it as well to get more eyes on it but in terms of uh, popularity and potential to build on decent stories going forward I think Fable definitely 110% be the, the the one that they need to get behind that needs to be revived I mean it's probably been eight years eight or nine years since we've had Fable 3 um, it's definitely about time that we got one but yeah that's that's why I'd, that's, that's why I'd get yeah. I've been playing the um uh, Perfect Dark Zero uh, gameplay uh, from obviously back in the day. Uh, G Man Lives YouTube video that, that we're uh, looking at. There you go. Uh, da -da. Anyway, they're looking back at the um, uh, Perfect Dark Zero game from 2005. Uh, and it looks, it looks okay. It looks like a game from 2005. I mean, to, if I'm being honest, uh, the fashion of it looks absolutely, it looks like Spice Girls. You've got some woman in like combat <laughs> pants with like weird streaks and, and stuff. Um, you trying to say it looks like Jerry Allowell? Yeah, yeah, exactly that kind of thing. But it looks like Jerry Halliwell merged with Sporty Spice, it's, it's <laughs> Sporty and Ginger Spinger Spice. There we go. Mm. Um, but it's kind of like, yeah, it it, it looks okay. Um, but I'm seeing like people, I'm seeing conversations on social media of people uh, saying people forgetting that Perfect Dark was actually a really good game. It scored really well, and it's like, well, that's the point. People are forgetting that. So even though it scored really well, doesn't mean it resonated with everyone uh people don't forget that metal gear solid scored really well people don't forget tomb raider scored really well uh, and mm. played really well people are forgetting perfect Dark zero for a reason and it just didn't resonate as much that i mean it could be solid it could be best game ever i'm not saying it isn't um uh but yeah stop trying to tell me that because people have forgotten about it it should be amazing and i should be hyped for it yeah. i will see it and if it looks good i will play it but at this point in time it's not, it's not anything particularly uh, excited about. Mbib says, shake it to the left. Uh, <laughs> shake it to the left. <laughs> if you're having a good time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if it was... <laughs> a per Perfect Dark was good for its time. It just never... It was never a game that I was going to sit there and replay and replay and replay. I'll play it. I'll enjoy it for what it is at the time because I've bought a game and I want to play it to try and enjoy it. But the, it just never... There is games that'll just never resonate with you, and this definitely was one of them. See, I'm, I'm I'll take it. I mean, I I was never a God of War fan. Um, the the hack and slashy sort of element just didn't resonate with me whatsoever. Uh, the new God of War, uh, that's more my kind of game, and and just because God of War sold really well and loads of people I know played the game doesn't mean that it. It excited me whatsoever. It wasn't until I saw Kratos uh, in the new God of War that I, and, and and got to understand what the game was like, get to see the actual gameplay. I thought, actually, yeah, this is a game that I'm interested in. The fact that it scored high is irrelevant to me because it, it oh great, something that I, that I didn't play in the past scores high. It's, I'll buy the new one. No, it's completely different. So with this, not bothered about Perfect Dark Zero, but if the new Perfect Dark looks good, if the game if they're doing what Sony have done to God of War with Perfect Dark, then yes, I'm fully on board for it. But but telling me to look at a game that's 15 years old and and reminding me how scored uh, how it scored, well, he's not he's not gonna sit with me. Um, Yeehaw says when two become one, what a Sporty and Ginger when two? Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, Sim says just give me Halo. The chief just needs to say hello and they have me. Um, see, I'm, I I need more than that because uh, that doesn't resonate with me. Um, I can of course in the last part. I want to see something more. Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. You had me in the first half. Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, yeah, that doesn't resonate in terms of it, it. Let's so like what was it kept you waiting? Huh? When when Kiefer Sutherland uh, did the uh, solid snake bit coming over the top of the cliff, that resonated because I have a history with uh, Metal Gear. But Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Um, well, 
and Ground Zero. Metal Gear Solid Five, which is classic as whole. If you weren't a Metal Gear Solid player, that's just like, oh, it's it's, it's a Metal Gear game. That doesn't resonate as much. But the emotiveness, the fact that Kiefer Sutherland has, has got in there, then that's stuff to kind of, like, break through. Uh, whereas if it's just like... I mean, where is, where is it? There you go. Master Chief just kind of goes... It's not. I know it's not Master Chief. I know it's a Doom helmet, but, but like just like... Hey, play the fucking game. <laughs> I mean, I probably like that, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. But, like, that... Like what? What does it look like? Who is he? What's his story? What does it mean? Is it just going to be about shooting? Give me something. Give, if it, and I think they can do. I think, I think Xbox just need to kind of step back and just go okay, forget, forget our core market as such. Let's talk to all market, which includes our core market. Get me that. Get me that, and I'll be I'll be on board with that. I mean, what what do you think, Master Chief? I think that's fucking good. Oh, thanks, really? Yeah, yeah I fucking do. My God, I'm not in Master Chief. I'm fucking I'm the Doomslayer, motherfucker. Oh, nice. Yeah, sweet. Cool. Wonderful, wonderful. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> uh, what do you think, babe? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, everyone else is getting to getting to view this fantastic content. I don't get to see any of what you've just done with that helmet. So I'll just say that looked phenomenal. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're all here for the hashtag content. <laughs> anyway, let's move ahead. I think I think that's the time. So the conference will be taking place week commencing. July the 20th, uh, potentially Thursday evening, July the 23rd, because that's when the PlayStation conference took place. That's when the first Xbox inside Xbox conference took place. So it's kind of, it's going to be that week kind of nailed on to be happening then. Um, there may be some watch along content here on Ice Cream Applause, but we will cover that when it all gets officially announced as time uh, moves forward. I don't see what you've done with the helmet. <laughs> Never mind. Mm. Uh, so next bit of news uh, for the day. Uh, let's stick with, stick with Xbox for this news. Eh? So July's Xbox Game Pass titles for console and PC include Fallout 76 Plus, Soul Calibur 6, Out of the Park Baseball 21, and CrossCode. Uh, this is written by Tom Ivan for VGC, and the article says Microsoft has revealed July's first wave of titles coming to Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. So Calibre 6 console and Out of the Park Baseball 21 PC join the subscription service today ahead of CrossCode for console and Fallout 76 uh, console and PC on July the 9th. Excuse me. <laughs> <clears throat> DLC Updates include today's launch of Minecraft Dungeons Jungle Awakens and the upcoming releases of Sea of Thieves, The Greatest Tales Never Told, State of Decay 2, Green Zone, and The Plunder Pack. The following games will leave Xbox Game Pass on July the 15th. Uh, so they are Blazing Chrome on console and PC, Dead Rising 4 console and PC, uh, PC Metal Gear Solid 5, oh, I should mention that, uh, console and PC, Time Spinner PC, Unavowed PC, and Undertale on PC. Uh, titles added to Games Pass in June included No Man's Sky, Bard's Tale Remastered, and Resnackled. Uh, what the hell? Bard's Tale Remastered and Resnackled? Okay, there we go. Uh, Kingdom Hearts <laughs> HD 1.5 and 2.5 Remix, Thronebreaker, Nightcall, Observation, Streets of Rogue, and The Messenger. Microsoft re recently announced record engagement figures for gaming services, including Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live. Game Pass subscribers topped 10 million. And Xbox Live active users approached 90 million during the company's third financial quarter, ended in March 2020. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate combines Xbox Live Gold membership with Xbox, Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. Uh, July's X, this, I swear this is just just shoehorning in all the articles that they can fit in here. That's, that's what it is. Uh, yep, yeah, we're, we're going to start there. We're going to start there. <laughs> shoehorning the going get out of here. Um, so yeah, as we've all just established. Um, it's. I think it's pretty much nailed on that the Xbox is the inferior console and will continue to be inferior for at least the next generation, maybe the generation after. And we're all. I mean, the the evidence is undeniable. We're all in agreement. And oh, look, there's Jordan in the chat. Xbox fanboy. I had no idea who was there. That's why I was saying that. No, no. no. <laughs> uh, good morning, Jordan. I'll read. I've literally just checked because I even though I pulled the article together this morning, uh, I've been looking to try and play Fallout 76 for a while. I've just not got round to it so far. Oh, it's coming to Xbox Game Pass. Just checked. It, is, it expired yesterday. So oh, I'm gonna really? have to, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to find um, another ultimate for not 30 quid or whatever it is that they usually pay. I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be some knocking around. So just to confirm... Fallout 76 for console slash PC is what you're after. Was that? Is uh, 
You said yeah, because it, 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 yeah, it's going to be on Games Pass, isn't it, so far? Oh, now's my time to pick it up. Ah, okay. Uh, 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 I thought I thought you meant you, you checked on Games Pass and it's not there. I was going to say, oh, okay, because it's not coming until July the 9th. I get you. I get you. No, yeah, so far, oh, I'll just check to see how long, because I, I got that, like, three months for a pound or whatever it was uh, for the Ultimate, for so I could play it on my PC, and then, yeah, can't. Can't it's play a... it now because it's just expired. And, look, uh... <laughs> and, I think, and I think for the ultimate, it's like twenty five pound for three months again. So I'll wait. I'll wait. There'll be a deal somewhere. <laughs> be one of those codes. I had something pop up on my Facebook like memories the other day, where it was like get one month of Xbox Live for one quid, and you could just stack it. So me and my mates just yeah. spent like thirty odd quid, and it's like that's it. We've got like a year and a half of Xbox. Ta-da! Uh, yeah, that's what Mark did as well. I'm sure he got like a Brazilian VPN, and he's got it for like three years. Yeah, Jordan saying, then uh, good, you can yeah, good, you can glitch it to get three years for uh, 100 pounds. Yeah, I I wasted mine. I just wanted to get my um, Halo Ren skin on Fortnite at Christmas, uh, so I had to install Xbox. I had so I had an Xbox voucher, so I thought I'll just buy Halo Ren with this leftover Xbox voucher. But I had to install Fortnite, and to to actually access the store on Fortnite and and so on, you have to be a, an Xbox Live slash Gold slash Game Pass whatever member. Um, so I thought, fuck it, I'll just pay the one quid to get that, so I can get in, so I can spend this couch to get color in, so I can keep playing it on my PlayStation. And then yeah. I've wasted my uh, my three month Game Pass job here. But never mind, never mind. Yeah, you know, I got color in. So who's the real winner? I think it's me. I think it's. Um, <laughs> Uh, I still think the power armor is a rip off of the Warhammer 40k armor. What in Fallout? It does look very. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a big Warhammer guy. I know. I pretty much only know it because of David's affair. But that character there just looks like an ultramarine from Warhammer. Uh, do you know? What? You, because I imagine most people don't know much about Warhammer to that uh, Warhammer ultramarines uh, image. There we go. So this is a Warhammer Ultramarine. That there, that is a Warhammer Ultramarine, and this is Fallout. Tell me that's not the same thing. That is the same thing. There's one hundred percent that's an Ultramarine. Uh, there you go. Um, so yeah, if you, I did find this article extremely complex. I did say when we were talking about Xbox Game Pass games the other day that I find it confusing. PlayStation, it's like, here's your free games this month. Ta-da! But Xbox has stuff coming out on console and stuff coming out on PC and stuff coming out on console and PC. And then some stuff comes on at the start of the month and some stuff goes off. And some stuff comes on in the middle of the month while some some stuff goes off. So what games are actually there? So Soul Calibur and Out of the Park Baseball join today and then Fallout 76 and CrossCode join later on. Plus there's some DLC stuff as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there you go. If you're on Xbox Game Pass, quick story short, if you're on Xbox Game Pass, just check the new updates because there are a number of new games, including Fallout 76, which will hit on Game Pass on July the uh, July the 9th. So feel free to jump in, take advantage of all of that joyful, joyful mm. stuff there. Um, anything else you want to add on Game Pass stuff, babe? Uh, not really, no. Um, if you haven't played... Fallout 76 or you have sorry if you have played it just let me know how you're getting on with it I heard it's a million times better than it was at launch uh, and as a Fallout fan I would like to get involved but I think uh, not getting involved on the day that it came out or building up to that is probably the best thing that would have happened to me because it would have soured my taste and I never would have been interested in playing it again however I've now seen it come kind of full circle and become a game that we'd expect from the Fallout franchise then, yeah, I, I, this is something that I actually want to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's move on from Xbox news. We've had a couple of Xbox articles. Let's jump into this next article, which says, Xbox Summer Games Fest will let you try more than 60 demos for upcoming games. I'm Jeff, it's obviously more Xbox news, written by Stefan Onolip of VG247. Starting this month, you will, you will be able to try somewhere between 75 and 100 game demos through the Xbox Summer Game Fest 2020 demo event. Microsoft has announced the demo event as part of the Summer Game Fest 2020, and during this time, July the 21st to the 27th, you will be able to play demos for around 60 upcoming unreleased Xbox games. You will be able to find them as a Game Fest demo tile on the Xbox One dashboard, and by the time the dust settles, there will be somewhere between 75 and 100 game demos made available. 
many of these demos are early and some are for games that won't be out for a while so expect the game to evolve and be polished as they're new release the demos might only be uh, be available through the xbox dashboard for a week but some might be republished to the demo channel later the full list will be announced closer to july the 21st but some of the games you can expect are chris tales destroy all humans haven Hellpoint, Raji, and Ancient Epic, Skatebird, uh, The Veil, Shadow of the Crown, and Welcome to Elk. Hit up the link for more information. Wait, wait, wait. That one? Must be that one. That one? There we go. Uh, oh, it's the uh, the upcoming event. That That is the most dodgiest logo in video games. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's not really that much more information. Chris Tales, Destroy All Humans, Haven. Um, Hellpoint, Skatebird. Who needs Skate Four? You've got Skatebird. I'm watching the trailer now. I thought this game came out a long time ago, um, but it isn't actually due out till next year. I've seen this like 18 months ago. What Skatebird? To... Yeah. Oh, so why it's taking so long? But yeah, I mean, it's I've just I've just seen it. I've seen this bird grinding on. I mean, this, this could go either way. This could go either way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, on a Thrasher magazine, so I'm guessing it's got some co- sort of high-profile backing because they won't be able to show stuff like that otherwise. But yeah, it lo- it looks like it looks like a skateboarding game with a bird <laughs> on a skateboard. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Um, but yeah, my opinion on demos <laughs> is we've said. I'm sure we've had one of these articles kind of like this week as well. Um, but yeah, more demos the better. Um, Summer Games Fest, we've just had uh, Steam Games Festival. Um, same things just with Xbox games. So just go back to like four episodes, get my opinions on that, and then you'll be able to transfer them over to this one. Uh, just putting Skatebird official announced trailer on, on screen, just because, you know, we all want to see Skatebird. Uh, Glass Bottom Games presents... A game about trying your best. Okay, I'm going to do the voice over there. Wow, <laughs> this is, it looks good, but but also it's at the bizarre. same yeah, also at the same time, why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what the community has wanted for years, Graham. <laughs> I mean, now now I've seen this, I'm, I'm in a flat. I hope it's pretty cheap. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I apologize, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I wonder. All right, you can switch off. <laughs> I've got to do it the rest of the podcast with him. <laughs> uh, I wonder if Tony Hawk is okay with another bird based skateboarding, uh, skateboarding game, but it says pistol mode. Hey, we like we like a good pun in this stream. We also like horrible puns, as you can tell. Uh, closing that. No more skateboard on this PC ever again. There we go. What does everyone think? Xbox uh, Summer Games Fest will let you try more than 60 demos for upcoming games. I like this. I like this. I do feel this is a bit like keeping up with the Joneses, though, in terms of... Are oh, you going to make me on now? Just you on. <laughs> yeah, I've just tried to hide it, but you can you can, you can can definitely tell when I'm, uh, when I'm yawning. Well, um... usually I try to hide it. It's like... If he's growling... Um... Yeah, this definitely feels a bit like looking at the opposition. Not, not that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. Xbox is definitely doing a good thing here, um, because Steam have had their their some. Stop it, it him. <laughs> Skatebird looks fun. I'm gonna tweet about it. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, Steam have had their. Um, is, is it called the Steam Summer Games Fest? Is that what it's called? It's in, yeah, it, 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 it's very similar. I think it's just taken away the the Steam bit and just slapped on an Xbox sticker on it. I mean, why not? It's it's it, I can't. It's kind of like one of them things now where it's across the board, and you know what you're getting from it. Like like I said, very very brief recap about the about the Steam one. I said it's good that we're not having expos. Because of the situations that we're having, and this is this goes with the EGX one that we talked about. Was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was yesterday. So the 
yeah, so the fact that we bring in all of the stuff that you'd expect from an expo to your home, i.e. you're getting to play demos, you're getting to watch panels, it's just everything is going to be behind your monitor rather than queuing up in a queue for three hours to play a 20-minute demo. You're getting the opportunity to be able to play them at home. That's perfect. That's fantastic. Let's do more of that because we're trying to fill a massive void without having these uh, huge conferences that you come to expect. The staples of your yearly game gaming calendar has been taken away. Let's continue with them. Let's just try and build something a little bit a little bit bigger. And for the people who have wanted to go to Expos for the longest time that can either never afford the ticket or afford to, uh, to, afford to go, or uh, they are not able to get to the events for one, re for one reason or another, they've got the opportunity now to be a fully-fledged uh, member of those conventions from the comfort of your own home. Um, and again, that includes spending a shitload of money on your daily, uh, daily things like transport, food, or whatever it may be. And then long queues, you've got the comfort of all of those things from your home while watching the stream. So you could be watching the conference while playing all the demos that you have available to you. Perfect. Let's do more of that for the time being until the world sorts itself out. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Watching Graham staffing a smoke. Honestly, it's just sat there, baby, baby talking away. She was like, don't. Egg came on, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's on it like they're going, Wow, is sure, wow, and then he chirps up with that, honestly, honestly, chirps up, chirps up, chirps up, chirps up. It must have been sat there thinking, Two can play that game. <sighs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, do you know what? It was bad, but I've got no egrets. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. I apologize to absolutely nobody as we move into our final story of the day. Actually, do you know what? Do you know what? Let's uh I didn't actually finish the point that I was saying for, so we won't move ahead just yet. Um Yeah. This, was it the summer summer game fest, the Steam Summer Game Fest? Is that we did, we, well yeah. just assume that's what it was. Do you know it's it's nice to see this because Xbox what was it? Xbox were the ones that took demos out, so they wanted demos for everything and they removed that. Um, and then there was criticism being thrown at PlayStation because PlayStation uh, recently said that all games on PS5 will have a demo on, on the store. And I I believe, maybe I'm putting words in Jordan's mouth, maybe it was maybe it was just said uh, to share the facts rather than charge with, with um, um, opinion. But the, the angle that I got was that, yeah, but Xbox had done that previously. So, and it was just like, so what Xbox have done that previously, and Xbox have stepped away from demos, but now because everyone else is looking at demos, Xbox is like look at all these demos. <laughs> so it's just kind of, yeah, it's it, it's it's good that they're doing it. I mean, you absolutely absolutely need to, but it's just kind of this is where the uh, the fanboyism kind of side of things should just be left at the door because um, there's no real there's there's no real negative to to looking at what everyone else is doing and they're going, do you know, what? I'm going to take that for myself, I'm going to take the inspiration, I'm going to run with it. Um, like I mean. Um, PlayStation just just had a good console and good games, and Xbox have started to take that and run. <laughs> I was joking, I was joking. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 an interesting switch. Whether whether it was charged or whether or not, uh, Xbox clearly saw the value in demos and then removed that function, but now have jumped back onto that. Why did they lose the belief in it enough to stop it? Did they believe that having demos? Because that's where the angle came from. The, the, uh, having a demo allows someone to play your game. If they get that five minute scratch there, Rich, they're not going to play it anymore. They're not going to buy the game. So demos could stop people buying your game. Mm -hmm. um, the rumor is that's why Xbox have stopped doing that. But if Xbox went through that learning, why have they now turned back? Is that because everyone else is and they don't want to get left behind? Or is it because, because of COVID and they're seeing it as the only way that they can market without having people queue up, as Bibi said, for seven and a half weeks when you got all the games sat there <laughs> in your monitor um so yeah it'd be interesting to i mean we never will know but it would be interesting to know why they've turned their back because they've already turned their back on the demos why have they turned back again to go hey demos yeah. so yeah that, that that i wonder i wonder anyway but yeah we were gonna move ahead let's move ahead our final uh story of the day uh, written by Tom Phillips for Eurogamer. There is an update to this story, so and another update, and the original story. So let's start at the bottom, and then we'll work our way back up. But the headline says, Crisis remastered trailer and release date uh, leaked. And then there's an update, Crytek delays game after fan feedback to lose. Oh, that, that, that lasted long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so we'll go down to the bottom. I literally haven't seen any of this, so this is all completely new to me. Uh, original story, 30th of the 6th, uh, 2020, so a couple of days ago. There's still 26 hours to go until Crisis Remastered is officially revealed to the world via a YouTube gameplay premiere, but you can now see how the game looks right now and find out its release date via the Microsoft Store. Crisis Remastered will launch on the 23rd of July and weigh in at 7.01 gigabytes on Xbox One according to its Microsoft Store listing. HDR and 4K visuals will be supported. As previously announced, the game's multiplayer portion does not appear to be making a return. Here's tomorrow's trailer, and it's not there because Cookie's saying stuff. And you do not actually click on it again and allow them all, as they always do every time, but there we go. Uh, the first, uh, the classic first-person shoot from Crytek is back with the action-packed gameplay, sandbox world, and thrilling epic battles you loved the first time around, now with remastered graphics optimized for a new generation of hardware, this description reads. This is the, uh, the third time in six weeks the Microsoft Store has leaked details on an upcoming uh, unannounced game following the early release of info on Star Wars Squadrons and Mafia Trilogy. I mean, one thing Xbox is doing consistently is leaking other people's content. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, surely there must be a lawsuit around the corner for stuff like this. Yeah. The thing is that you can't really do anything because if, you, if you're a year with Star Wars Squadrons news and you like put pressure on Xbox, you're just going to sour. Uh, so with the relationship. Long story short, EA needs Xbox, so they can't really do that much there. Um, uh, Crisis Remastered is coming to PC, PlayStation 4, Switch, and Xbox One. Expect a shinier version of the above trailer in around 26 hours. So then update one. Today's official Crisis Remastered video gameplay reveal has been set to private on YouTube. The trailer had been due to go live within the next hour or so this afternoon and had been counting down until then. A leaked version of the trailer and various screenshots received a mixed reaction from fans after popping up online yesterday. Eurogamer has contact, contacted Crytek for comment. That was, uh, so the first start, story on the 30th of the 6th, that was on the 1st of the 7th at 3.45. And the next update, also the 1st of the 7th, but at 4.05, so half an hour later, Crytek has delayed the gameplay reveal uh, and release date of Crisis Remastered following feedback to yesterday's leaks. The game's launch, uh, leaked yesterday as 23rd of July, will be pushed back several weeks as Crytek polish the game further. Your passion for the Crisis franchise deserves an undeniably high-quality game, and we are committed to delivering just that, Crytek wrote in a statement posted to Twitter this afternoon. To ensure we meet that commitment, we will need to delay the launch date of platforms and trailer premiere by a few weeks. You might be aware of the leak yesterday, and we want you to know we've seen all the reactions, the good and the bad, and we are listening. We're still working on a number of things in-game as well as the storefront. Please keep the love coming and rest assured uh, you'll have the game you booked shortly. This extra time until release will allow us to get Crisis Remastered to the PC and console-breaking standard you come to expect from PC games. We hope you understand that uh, that we're up uh, we, we hope you understand that we're up to or what? There we go. Not that's what. There we go. I can read them. We hope to understand, uh, you understand what we're up to and that you stay with us while we take the time to make a few more improvements. The full statement lies below. For that. Uh, so the, the full statement, let's just quick read through. Dear Crisis fans, as you know, Crisis Remastered will be coming to the world this year. And at the same time, Crisis IP will debut on Nintendo Switch. Your passion for the Crisis franchise deserves an undeniably high-quality game, and we are committed to delivering just that. To ensure that we meet that commitment, we will need to de de uh, delay the launch all platforms and trailer premiere by a few weeks because they already started. Pre-orders for, uh, for Switch will stay up, but pre-orders for all other platforms will be delayed as well. The features you're looking forward to are already set, but we won't take the time on polishing the game. You might be aware of the leak yesterday, and won't you know we've all uh, seen all the reactions to good and the bad and we're listening we're still working on a number of thing, things in game as well as the store from please keep the love coming and rest so you'll have the game you'll shortly the extra time until release will allow us to uh, get the crisis remastered up to the pc and console breaking standards you've come to expect from crisis games we hope uh, you understand what we're up to and that you stay with us while we take time to make a few more improvements stay tuned and we'll have that game in your hands as soon as we possibly can we'll keep you updated on our progress so please hang in there and check back here for updates thank you team crisis um interesting a game being delayed so that it can be improved uh before it even gets announced <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing I, I honestly don't think i've ever seen that before um obviously the only way really, it would it have been a different story if the trailer actually got managed to count down and play uh before getting leaked 
uh, and then have people having their opinions on it beforehand. Uh, would it have been a different story if they let it play out and then kept to the original timeline? I'm not too sure, but uh, we've said, we've mentioned Crisis before. I mean, when I was growing up, if your PC or your if your PC could run Crisis, you had the best PC around. Like it's just one of them games; it would destroy your PC um, with how good it looked. Um, it was definitely the the game that set the bar uh, in my in, around my area. Anyway, um, it set the bar around so, your area. Yeah, for yeah. video games. If <laughs> if your PC could run Crisis, mate, you had the best PC. That that was essentially it. Um, it was a meme, though, wasn't it? Can it run Crisis, though? Yeah, well, that's it, yeah. Can it run Crisis? Um, so it's interesting that <laughs> at this moment in time, in 2020, no, it's going to look <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> gonna, that, that, at this point in 2020, it, my, my calculator can run Crisis from what we're taking <laughs> from that article. So, yeah, maybe they need to come back and just add, like, 27 gigs worth of textures to be uh, loaded on the fly. <laughs> PC... <laughs> So yeah, it's it's interesting that they're going to take the extra time to to polish the game. There was one part of the article. Let me see if I can get it again. Uh, I should have highlighted it before moving on. Uh, I can't find it. It's basically saying something like it was the crisis that you'd come to expect that will like break your PC or something like that. Uh, I can't find it. Uh, I, I, it's, just, it's just completely there gone. This this extra time until release will allow us to get Crisis Remastered up to the PC and console breaking standard uh, you come to expect from PC games. There you go. <laughs> that, that's the that's the line I was looking for. That's like I'm, I'm having throwbacks to 14, 15 years ago when this bad boy originally came out. So yeah, it's it's just one of them things. At this moment in time, uh, we are expecting games uh, to be delayed and for extra polish. We've literally had Cyberpunk be put by put put back twice this year uh the latter being put back by months um we've had the last of us did that get delayed twice this year as well yes i so, think the first time initially delayed and the second time delayed for distribution reasons for covid and stuff yeah so i mean it's it's the new normal at this moment in time if you expect a date don't expect it to come on that game if they deem that they want to put a bit more polish on it then expect to wait that's exactly what i've done with this see i um, I, I like a uh, slight tangent i like that norm because one thing i don't like is, is pissy people that feel entitled no it's bullshit that this thing that i have no ownership of is not out now and it's like you, you Literally, you play it, but you don't own it. You're a fan of the series, you might own the background, but you don't own what we've been doing now. It will be released when it's ready. Just fucking chill out, step back and let it happen rather than forcing shit. I like the fact that people kind of have to accept it now because, well, okay, fine, we're going to buy it. So people aren't just being pissy and money. It's been delayed. It's shit that it's delayed. I'm not even going to buy it. Literally, you'd see those sort of comments. Well, don't buy it then. If, if, yeah. if, it, if it being made better... For everyone else means that you're not going to buy it now. Then, oh, do you know what? That's a sacrifice that I'm willing to take. <laughs> uh, I anyway, agree. anyway, I didn't realise that we have been tagged in another article. Uh, so Shogun Ash live in the chat um, has linked us up to another article, which was in. Uh, it's been posted just an hour ago, so we'll, we'll jump, jump into this one as well. So we are going to quickly uh, cut that article short as we jump into this one. Microsoft renews Fable trademark amid sequel. Uh, rumours with intent to use, written by Jordan Olliman for IGN. This article says, Microsoft has applied to renew its Fable trademark as rumours of a sequel to Lionhead's RPG franchise continue to swell. Uh, you can check out the trademark application here, which is linked in the article, uh, which was filled out on June the 26th. It's standard practice for businesses to renew trademarks for IPs that they own, but within the current context, it's an interesting move, especially when you notice the intent to use tag, which is marked as yes, despite the current use tag be marked as no, suggesting that Microsoft has future plans for the franchise. The Fable rumor mill has been spinning for years at this point, and there's plenty of information to dig into. Earlier this week, Microsoft downplayed the significance of the placeholder Fable Twitter account, despite it seemingly had been registered in March of this year by a user with a Microsoft email address. Back in November 2017, we reported that Playground Games was hiring talent for a new game listed as an open-world action RPG. In fact, the developer opened an entirely new studio earlier that year to create Project 2, a game that will not feature any racing, distance it, uh, distancing it from the Forza series the developer is known for. Then, in 2018, Playground Games creative director Ralph Fulton told Daily Star Online that the Xbox One X will be the lead platform for the studio's next game, just days after a Eurogamer report surfaced suggesting that a new Fable game was in development at Playground. If you're interested, 
In what Fable creator Peter Molyneux is looking for in a new entry from the franchise, check out our interview from early 2018. No, thank you. Uh, we'll stop there because it's just just tedious links that are shoehorned in. It's, it's getting, that's getting even worse, that. I mean, there used to be some good stuff at the end of an article, like, and if you want to find out more. Now it's just like, also, <laughs> yesterday, you wrote about spaghetti. And it's like, fuck it, I'm literally reading about Fable. What the fuck is, give me, give me something. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, John says, not surprising when they just hired about uh, hired a lot of old Fable producers from Fable One. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Well, why don't you link that up to us, mate? God, I mean, honestly, Jordan, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think you're allowed to subscribe to this channel for? Honestly, you're supposed to provide us with the news. God, <sighs> I don't even know if you can hear me sighing. Then I'm going. <laughs> But I don't know if it's coming yeah, through the mic. Because I, I can hear it. Yeah. I was like, is that being RTX voiced into oblivion? Am I just sat there going? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's almost a no-brainer for me. Uh, if you have staff and you've been kind of, if all of the rumours are pointing towards a new Fable game, I think this is just another one that kind of says, yeah. I mean, Microsoft are like, yeah, yeah, we're just we're just saving the uh, Twitter d domain name, and yeah, we've just we've just hired all the staff, and yeah, we've just announced that we're making a new game the day after someone has mentioned that Fable's being remade, and 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 now we've got uh, like copyright IP uh, trademark. Sorry, I should have stuff. Yeah, but yeah, we're absolutely not working on a Fable game, and yes, I'm wearing a T-shirt that says I work on Fable, but I'm not working on a Fable game. It's like it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um. I, ne I never want to hear Graham breathing that heaven into my ears again. Not after the last time. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the fabled... New you, you couldn't see that, but you, you're probably happy to have not seen the face that I just pulled in. You are welcome. The, the fabled <laughs> new fable game, uh, says Iceman. Good morning, Iceman. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um... Oh, oh, one thing I did miss, though, was David saying, you know what they say, birds of a feather. Whee, whee. Uh, if we're not all playing Skatebird this weekend, I mean, why are we even here? What's, what is the point? What is the point? I expect, I want to see Shaw playing a full-on play-along Skatebird 27-hour stream. If it's not, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Fail bird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and on that bombshell, it is time to wrap things up. We've gone through all of the news. Uh, Fable Looks like it's happening. It's not happening, but it's 100% happening. Um, as well as that, uh, the Microsoft Series X game showcase will take place, rumoured uh, to be the week of July the 20th. Most likely July the 23rd. Uh, July's Xbox Game Pass for console and PC includes Fallout 76. Uh, the Xbox Summer Game Fest will let you try more than 60 demos for upcoming games on your Xbox consoles. And Crisis uh remaster trailer was leaked and then unleaked as they announced but not announced and then unannounced the game because it quite frankly won't break your console so it is what it is uh but that is the news of the day thank you everyone for joining us in the stream today very much appreciate having you all in here uh iceman says it's like ubisoft saying that the new track mania doesn't have a sub subscription model when it does i don't even know what track mania is what is track mania track mania is a great game it's a racing game I was I was like trying to wait in my head, so I was like, is it a racing track? Is it, sorry, is it like a, a, a yeah racer, or is it is track mania some sort of like beat mania sort of like dancing track slash <laughs> music two thousand? So I, I, don't, I don't even know what track mania is. I don't know, but track Good. mania. It's difficult. So, it, so it doesn't have a subscription model, but it does have a subscription model. How does that work? Uh. I don't know what that is. That's completely passed me by, is that one? Uh, but there we go. We're going to wrap things up. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in the stream today. We are done for the scoop. Feel free to stick around, though, uh, as I'm going to struggle to get chicken dinners like I usually do on PUBG. I said that. I've got two the other day in five games, so 40% win rate, so I'm saying. So, I'm saying. Uh, so feel free to stick around in the stream if you want to watch that. If you don't, then well, just bugger off, then. Whatever. I don't care. Whatever, mate. It's a tune. Whatever. Didn't want you here anyway. I mean, I did, but it's a tune. Anyway, anyway, have yourself a fantastic day, whatever you're doing. But before we do disappear, mm. dear man in beautiful ice cream uploads esports jersey exclamation mark merch in the chat if you want to get one for yourself if chatbot is open i don't know if it is maybe it is maybe it yes is. it is but it is yeah exclamation mark merch in the chat what what would you like to say do you have anything you'd like to add to the end of this stream yes i do if you do see any video game news knocking around the social media platform of your choice just like shogun ash did this morning uh tagging us in with some fable stuff 
Uh, all you need to do is just find us on social media. The link should be in the chat now. It's ice cream uploads across absolutely all of the social media platforms. Uh, or if you just want to find out, uh, drop it us on Discord. The Discord link may be in the chat as well, so you may be able to pick that up. Uh, that's a little bit more difficult to find, but if you are user, if you are watching this live on Twitch, just click our logo. You'll find a couple of links there. There's a Discord one uh, there too. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll be going live again for the last scoop of the of of the week. At what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day? 10 a.m. Ish. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asman says it came out yesterday. It's free to play, but you don't get the full game. Uh, you can pay $10 a year, but still don't get the full game. And you pay $30 a year, and you finally get the full game. That, but that's not a subscription. <laughs> that's not a subscription. That's just, that's just a donation towards gameplay. Yep, that's what it is. Anyway, yep. uh, other unconvincing messages. <laughs> uh, uh, another unconvincing message is I'm about to get shitloads of chicken dinners. That's not convincing at all. Yeah, but yeah. You, can, you can try and see if I can or not. That that will be uh, almost instant. We'll go off. We'll go offline. I'll put the green screen up and I'll get set for some PUBG. So if you want to stick around for that, feel free to do that. If not, the scoop, as Bib mentioned already, 10 a.m. ish tomorrow. We will be back with that. And as well as the scoop tomorrow, with it being a Friday, we have Masters of the League episode 21. Is it 20? I think it's 21. Uh, yes, it is 21. 21. As we approach 40 hours of content of Master League, if you want to watch the full series, it's all available on our YouTube. One thing we do need to do, actually, is put that into a playlist on YouTube. It is. <laughs> Mate, come on. Well, I had a look earlier on. I had a look and I couldn't see it. Oh, do, 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 would you like me to drop it into the chat for you? So on, everyone in the chat can do, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh... Oh, okay. Get it I mean, I put it on our homepage because, yeah, there we go. I, I thought it was on the playlist, but all I can see is Toby's Life is Strange playlist from two years ago. <laughs> we, need, we need to get it on there instead of that one. Um, baby's on his job, lad. Uh, next change. You know what I mean? Next change. Fucking amateur hour around here, isn't it? It usually is. Amateur Honestly. hour. Honestly. Uh, says, I mean, it's not like we were playing with. With size seven thousand font numbers on our shirts or anything yesterday, that's fine. Well, that's that, that's absolutely nothing to do with me. That's the way that Pez <laughs> plays. Do you know what I mean? I'm doing my best here. I'm a one man band. Oh, there we go. Amateur hour. Now he's doing his best. Honestly, one of the best to to other to to other love love. Anyway, before before we have a, a raging Barney, uh, there we go. Playlist. There you go. If, you, if you want to watch it, yeah. All right then. Uh, God, tell tell us what you think, babe. <laughs> Hey! Hey! There we go. Uh, have yourselves a fantastic day, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, what have we got to do, Bip? Honestly, honestly, can't get this after this. Stay frosted! <laughs>